Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. Moorhead police are looking for who shot out multiple mat bus shelters near the Concordia College campus. Take a look at this. The bus shelter's glass is completely destroyed. As you can see, glass shards scattered across the ground. Officials say the damage is consistent with someone using a BB gun and shooting out the glass windows. Matt Bus says the cost damages are totaled to be more than $4,000. If anyone has information regarding this investigation, you are asked to contact the Red River Dispatch Center at 701-451-7660 and ask to speak with the Moorhead Police Supervisor. Good news this evening after a 77-year-old Fargo woman was found unharmed. Authorities say 77-year-old Adele Shenick wandered away from her husband around 11 a.m. today. Luckily, she was found. But with in incidents like this happening far too often, what are some of the precautions or steps to prevent situations like these? For that, stick with Valley News Live for more on this story tonight on 9 and 10. Today, authorities have confirmed the former Fargo All-American wrestler died due to a heart defect. 18-year-old Curtis LaMera Prior Lake was found dead in his dorm at Northern State University in Aberdeen, South Dakota on Wednesday. His mother says LaMera's roommate tried to wake him up for wrestling practice, but he died in his sleep. The autopsy did not specify exactly what the heart defect that killed him was. His funeral is scheduled for Monday morning in Prior Lake. The sun has stuck around for us today, but it remains pretty breezy out there. So how does the rest of our evening and weekend look? For that, let's check in with meteorologist Robert Hahn. Robert? Yeah, we'll continue to see some breezy to windy conditions as we head through this evening. A few more clouds as the evening wears on and eventually a chance for some rain showers and maybe a few flakes of snow for a few of us. 46 right now in Bedette, 50 Roseau and Thief Row Falls, 57 here into the Fargo-Moorhead area. Those winds still at times gusting over 30 miles per hour, close to 40 miles per hour. In a few locations, those stick with us through this evening. Increasing clouds from north to south as we head through the next several hours. And underneath those clouds, we are seeing some rain showers. And they'll slide on south and again. Some of that could be mixed a little bit of snow very late tonight and early on your Saturday morning. Here in Fargo, we stay dry through this evening with some slowly increasing clouds. Temperatures cooling down into the upper 40s by the 8 o'clock hour. And we're going to stay that way as we head through the 8, 9 o'clock hour. And wind chills in the upper 30s. The weekend is here. How is it looking? We will let you know as well as take a look at that entire seven-day forecast in just a few minutes. All right. Thank you, Robert. Mm -hmm. This week's Valley's Most Wanted is 35-year-old Michael Kazmarski. Police say he's wanted out of Cass County for a violation of a 24-7 program on a charge of failure to appear. Call your local law enforcement if you have any information on Kazmarski. A man who was kidnapped and sexually assaulted by the same man who killed Jacob Wetterling will have his day in court. Jared Shirell is suing Danny Heinrich, who has confessed to killing Wetterling in October 1989 and kidnapping and assaulting Shirell nine months before that in Cold Spring. Shirell was 12 at the time, although Heinrich confessed he could not be charged in Shirell's case because the statute of limitations had expired. Authorities have identified the victim in a deadly train versus truck crash as 49-year-old Kurt Anderson. The crash happened Tuesday night around 11 just west of New Rockford. Authorities say a BNSF train was heading east when it smashed into the driver's side of the truck. The driver from Cheyenne was pronounced dead at the scene. Earlier today, one person was airlifted to the hospital after two beat trucks that crashed near Felton. Police say that they got the call around 615 to 110th Street and 160th Avenue. When emergency crews arrived, they found both drivers had serious injuries. One of the drivers had to be airlifted to a Fargo hospital and the other was taken by an ambulance. Their condition is unknown at this time. How many people do you think you could take out for dinner and only spend $100? That's the essence of questions being raised today by the group backing Measure 1 on North Dakota's general election ballot. That measure creates an ethics commission. and It's aimed at writing heard on who exactly is influencing the state's elected officials and how they go about it. For example, the Measure 1 backers today produced documents that show one lobbyist took legislative committee members out for dinner in March of last year six times at a total cost of $700. They got the information using a freedom of request information request. 
And according to the information they got, the lawmakers weren't taken to McDonald's to eat. We think the citizens of North Dakota should know um, who is buying time, friendship, and favor among our elected officials. And it is, at this point, uh, has a lot of holes in the process. They say if Measure 1 passes, the information about what lobbyists spend on your representative and how that money is spent will be available online. Don't forget to grab your Mega Millions ticket today. The jackpot is now at $1 billion. That's right, the $1 billion prize is the second largest in U.S. lottery history. If there's no winner tonight, you can't expect the next Mega Millions drawing to be climbing even further past a billion. Later tonight, there could be a $1 billion Mega Millions winner. And as mentioned, tomorrow night, a Powerball winner could gain about half of that. But before you pick up your ticket, Valley News Team's Rose Itzkovitz has some other numbers for you to consider as she looks at the odds of actually winning. I ran into Riaz Aziz inside the Orton's Holiday in Moorhead, buying four Mega Millions tickets. I said, what the heck, it's better than me carrying change around with me. Side note, Aziz also teaches economics at NDSU. And I'm always telling my students, you know, if you're going to make an investment, do it in something that offers you a greater return on the investment than a lottery. Then again, here I am dousing $8 on a lottery ticket. He knows the odds are bad, but just how bad? I headed to his workplace to find out. Yeah, the odds are so low. Rhonda Magel teaches statistics at NDSU. She says winning either the Mega Millions $1 billion jackpot or the Powerball's nearly $500 million jackpot have roughly a 1 in 300 million chance. To give you an idea of how small those odds are, you're about 100,000 times more likely to be struck by lightning in your lifetime and nearly 500 times more likely to win an Olympic gold medal. Oh, I want the winning one. But how about winning both? That is about 1 in 88 uh, quadrillion for the odds. 88 quadrillion. That's 88 followed by 15 zeros. You take a stack of $100 bills and line all your stack up. 88 trillion would go around the earth 704 times. I'm quite familiar with the fact that the more tickets uh, are sold, the less the probability is of me winning the ticket. That's what I thought too. But Magel says it has nothing to do with the amount sold. Instead, it's the random number scheme. So like in the Mega Millions, uh, you need to pick five numbers between 1 and 70, and then a number between 1 and 25. Because of all the hype, I'm buying, um, buying them today. Is it partly just the fun of the fact that the number is so high, or is it really just the appeal of the number being so high? I guess it's the appeal of the number being so high. So not really like the fun of the... No. <laughs> not everyone not says it's fun to lose right? money. But as for Aziz... Whoever wins it, my $4, or in this case, my $8 is going to help them out. So that's great. He says he'll just enjoy the thrill of checking his numbers. Rose Iskovitz, Valley News Live. And just to give you an idea of how much ticket sales have increased since the jackpot's gone up, the Orton's manager tells us they made nearly $3,000 in ticket sales yesterday alone. Now compare that to the beginning of October when less than $300 in ticket sales were made in one day. We have a new road closure that could impact your commute. Starting today, the southbound lane of Elm Street at the 1200 block north will close until tomorrow for installation of a residential sewer service. Officials are also alerting the public of another road closure in the metro. Cheyenne Street from 17th Avenue West to 13th Avenue West will be shut down tomorrow as crews will be working on the west side of the street from 730 in the morning to 5 o'clock at night. Today, officials confirm that water main repairs and testing in Pelican Rapids have officially been completed and that the issued boil water advisory has been lifted. Customers can now use the city water for consumption purposes. Officials say a main water break was responsible for an advisory to boil drinking water. It's what night.